What's up guys, it's Doodoo Poker here for Drive HUD. I wanted to go over another hand with you guys. Let's go to my trusty tracker. So recently I have been experimenting with different 3-bet frequencies out of the big blind. I got my frequencies from modern 3-bet ranges by Peter Clark, otherwise known as characters. He goes with a mixed polarized strategy. So these are the ranges he uses. The weaker ASEC suited hands are 50-50. The ones that can flop a decent pair are calls. And then Ace-10 suited is 50-50, and then the super premiums are 100%. And as you, you can see, all the red boxes are 50-50, and the blue is call. So this strategy is called a mixed polarized strategy, and I've been implementing it with some success. Um, if you do exactly this exact chart, you get a 3-bet frequency of 13%. So I've been doing that, and that's what I did in this hand. So this is a button versus big blind hand. And my opponent has 62 big blinds. I am setting the big blind with 10 8 of diamonds. So if we go to our trusty chart here, 10 8 of diamonds suited is 50 50. I decided I wanted to 3 bet this time. You can use a random number generator um, to decide, or you can just pick which suits you like. If you like diamonds and hearts, you can do those and then call spades and clubs. But let's see what happened. Okay. He raises 2.2x. I make it. Um, 9.4x. So the reason I made it a little bit bigger than 4x is because of his stack size. Um, a 4 bet shove would not be a natural pot size bet for him. So I size up against 60 big blind or 70 big blind stacks and I size down against 40 or 30 big blind stacks. It's just a little thing to note, but it does increase your win rate like a little bit. Okay, he calls take a flop. Ace of clubs, nine of clubs, six of spades. All right, get my solver out here. I ran uh, this sizing. So to simplify everything, I said that button opened 3x BB and BB 3 bet to 12. And then the pot was 24 and a half BBs, 100 BB effective, and then 88 BB effective because the minus 12 with a 3.6 stack to pot ratio. So as far as my range goes, range one's out of position, 13.3%, 176 combos, 176 combos, 13%. This is my three bet big blind range versus a button open. And this is what I have for his button defending range. I have him calling deuces and threes at around 50% frequency. The uh, suited one gappers I have at 50%. And then the super premium queens I have at 50. And then ace jack could be four bet or could be called. So I have that at 50. And the rest I have at 100% frequency. So I ran a solve at 75% c-bet sizing, which is the sizing I use and I like. You can use a smaller sizing or a bigger sizing. Just remember that the frequency goes up the smaller your sizing. So if I did 33%, the frequency would be higher than the 75% sizing. So what I'm gonna do is check out the advanced mode and I'll add current tree and then we'll go to the equities. Okay, so big blind has 
0.25% equity to the pot. And the EV is 12.21. So remember, the pot was 24.5, less 5% rake. So 12.21. 12.21 EV for a big blind. And let's see what the EV is for button. 44.75 equity, 10 point. Ten point two six EV for button. Okay. So let's see which hands bet and which hands check. I'm going to go to my exact hand. 10 8 of diamonds will be betting 47.5% of the time and checking 2.5% of the time. So that is essentially a range bet. Um, when the percentages are really low like that, you just want to do it at 100% frequency so you don't confuse yourself. So 10 8 of diamonds would be a Let's see what we got here. That would be a gut shot. So I want to see, I want to lock this in for a second. 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8. Okay. Let's see what we got. Gutter balls. Uh, I thought I had that for a second. Uh. All right, 10, 8. So first thing we notice is with 10, 8, is we're always betting 10 8 of hearts and 10 8 of diamonds. But we're always checking 10 8 of clubs and we're betting 10 8 of spades at a lesser frequency. So what does that mean? That means the more vulnerable the hand, the more likely you should bet. So a hand like 10 8 of clubs, which is not really you have a decent amount of equity to the pot, you actually check that hand at 100% frequency, which is super counterintuitive. You'd think you'd bet that. But GTO dictates that you check that hand. And then you would bet your hands that can't continue on future streets. Like if you check 10-8 suited, 10-8 of clubs, I, sh I should say, you can do multiple things. You can either, let's just undo this for a second. Think about 10-8 of clubs for a second. Let's say we check 10-8 of clubs and he bets. Now, okay, it always calls, but this is a 75% C-bet sizing. If he bets smaller, you could probably check raise as an exploit. It just gives you more opportunity, whereas if you check a hand like, you know, if you check a weak hand, just a gut shot, you know, it doesn't really give you as much maneuverability. So I actually misplayed this hand. Again, I like to show you guys hands that I misplayed because it happens a lot. <laughs> it also helps me learn too. All right, so let's see what happened in the actual game. I bet 75% sizing, which is my sizing. On the flop, I always use 75% C-bet sizing, whether it's a single race pot or a three bet pot. This helps me understand my ranges and it also helps me crystallize how I'm gonna be playing on future streets. So I know which hands I'm checking on the flop, which hands I'm betting, which hands are mixed strategies. I don't go, you know, one third sizing at certain spots to uh, two thirds sizing, over bet sizing. No, like there's, it's literally near impossible to remember your ranges that way. So to simplify my strategy, I always bet 75% C bet sizing on the flop. And I think you should pick one sizing. If you guys like one-third sizing, you should pick one-third sizing. If you like 50%, pick 50%. The thing is, is the EV doesn't matter much. The EV difference is negligible. Look at this. Look at the difference in the EV. 33%, 12.23, 50%, 12.21. This is pennies. This is pennies on the pot. So it's literally less than 1%. Much less than 1% difference. So there's, it's negligible. It's almost not even a factor. It's, I would totally disregard it, to be honest with you. So anyways, I bet. Let's see what Villain does. Villain calls. Okay. Turn is a five of spades. So I bet Villain calls five of spades. Let's see what happens on the turn, or what GTO. GTO is betting 52% of his range on the turn at 75% C-bet sizing. 
So now I want to see what hands I'm betting. Well, I'm betting hands like 5-4, five, 4-3. Four, four, Those are clubs, though. All six fives, of course. But let's go to 10-8 for a second. 10-8 is always checked. Always checked unless you have the spades and it's 50-50 about. So here's where I made a mistake. You want your opponent to have eights. You want your opponent to have tens here. Because those hands aren't very strong. And they'll be put in a really tough spot if you go all in. So I'm actually blocking hands I want my opponent to have. So you would never bluff with this hand on the turn. Of course, I did. But in theory, you would never bluff with this hand. Because you want your opponent to have tens and you want your opponent to have eights. So let's see what hands you would bluff with. You would bluff with... Let's see... A lot of pair plus straight draws are bl are bluffed. Um, yeah, pretty much a lot of pair plus straight draws. Even hands like queen 10, king x, king 5. Okay. Mostly pair plus straight draws. So... Let's see what happened in the actual hand. I bet all in, which was not a good play. I should have check folded the turn. And I get called. Drawing to... Let's see, how much equity do I have in the turn? Oh, a solid 9%. <clears throat> I actually like... Let's see how my opponent played this in. He had a set. Let's see how often he should raise the flop with a set here. So my opponent had pocket nines. I bet he has pocket nines. My opponent should always just call pocket nines. So my opponent played it really well. You, A lot of people get scared when there's a flush draw on the board or uh, you know straight possibilities. But look at GTO. GTO always calls with nines, never raises. Look at this. Always calls with sixes, never raises. So let's see a hand like ace six. Ace six always just calls. He only raises 2.6% of the time. Interesting. So he's never raising a very strong hand. He's raising top pair, good kicker. So my opponent played it very well. So the thing to take away from this is, one, your strategy... Your small blind 3-betting strategy versus a button and your big blind 3-betting strategy versus a button is completely different. Your big blind 3-betting strategy is going to be more mixed polarized. Which is a lot of middling hands, a lot of ace, x off. And then your small blind strategy it's going to be at a higher frequency. So this is the small blind first button strategy. Look at the difference. Look at the composition difference. It's going to be much stronger hands from the small blind. So it's a more linear strategy at a higher frequency. 234 combos at 18%. So all these hands like queen four, you know, ace four, hands like uh, nine six, you know, all these hands that are like 50-50 hands, those are just folded in the small blind. So the difference between your small blind 3-betting strategy and your big blind 3-betting strategy is your big blind 3-betting strategy is a lesser frequency with a different composition and weaker. It's actually weaker. Yes, weaker. But your, your uh, small blind 3-betting strategy is stronger but more linear. So less polar. So your small blind three betting strategy is linear, and your big blind th uh, strategy is mixed polarized. So I think that's like a pretty important thing to go over. Just because, you know, poker is getting really hard nowadays. So the first thing you want to know 
is how to play preflop. And even even I, I'm still learning how to play preflop. Like, which hand should I three bet? Which hand should I call? What should I do mixed frequencies with? Like, and then once you figure out your preflop strategy, you figure out your flop strategy. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm figuring out my flop strategy. So I know I'm doing 75% C-bet sizing, and then I know I'm betting at 34% frequency on an ace, nine, six, two-tone board, big blind versus button. So that's how you kind of construct your preflop play, and then how it translates into your flop play. Well, I thought this was a kind of a cool little hand. I misplayed it, end up getting, you know, losing 60 big blinds, but I did learn something in the process. And I hope you guys did too. Alright, this is Doodoo Poker for Drive Hood. Talk to you guys soon.